the operation of the machine becomes so odious, makes you so sick at heart that you can't take part. You can't even passively take part. And you've got to put your bodies upon the gears and upon the wheels, upon the levers, upon all the apparatus, and you've got to make it stop. And you've got to indicate to the people who run it, to the people who own it, that unless you're free, the machine will be prevented from working at all. Okay. Um, so, what, what do you think of the people that have, have said and accused you of selling out? Well, we've had a lot of chances with the same people in the same machinery to be uh, vaulted off into X and Go-Go's land. The same people who did R.E.M. and Wall of Voodoo and Go-Go's and whatnot offered that machinery to us and even made efforts to nudge us there a little bit, and we didn't want to do that. Okay. Uh, you're managed by the company. Uh, and this surprised me. I only found this out. You're managed by the company. You look after S Club 7. You used to look after the, the Spice Girls, Simon Fuller. Uh, have they tried to, to mould you in any way, though, if people ask you to do things to change the way you look or speak or behave? Um, yeah, one of them tried to mould me into a big triangle shape, and I went, no! Nah, you know, I've got my other style. Here's a story about another Scotsman influenced by American culture. For two years, Gavin Bain posed as an American rapper, and he managed to get a major label record deal out of it. In 1999, he saw an ad for an open audition with a well-known UK record label called Polydor, and it asked, are you the next Eminem? Now, Bain and his friend Billy Boyd thought they were, so they hopped on a bus to prove it. And the story of what happened next is told by Gavin Bain in his new memoir. It's called California Scheming. When we arrived, you know, it's a 13-hour bus journey down to London from Dundee, so we were pretty tired, and we, we just went straight to the audition, and there was a queue right up the street, you know, like, wow. there was, I don't know, 10, 15 blocks, it was just uh, mammoth, absolutely mammoth. We kind of just joined the back, and we battle-wrapped our way, skipping the queue right to the front. Eventually, we come across the, uh, I guess you can call them judges, right, right. This, in this day and age. You start rapping for them. Yeah, I just, just started doing one of our songs, and they were just kind of laughing. <laughs> they, they just started laughing. Within about 30 seconds, it was like someone laced the room with nitrous oxide. It was, they were just like, nah, that's not going to work. You sound like the rapping proclaimers. Like the rapping proclaimers. Yeah. The Scottish we, band, of course, the proclaimers. Yeah. Best known for 500 miles. Um, or Yeah, I will walk 500 right. miles. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, so we were not walking. We were taking a bus a, a few hundred miles back up to... Dundee. So you guys go back to Dundee, you're crestfallen, and then you guys <laughs> come up with a plan to actually make it as American rappers. Um, first of all, why did you decide to do that? We didn't really make the plan until I saw <laughs> The Secret of My Success, you know that old classic oh, 80s yeah, movie? Oh yeah, Michael J. Fox. Michael J. Fox. Right. And you know his, his uh, character Carlton you know, gets into this company and he, he basically cons his way that he's an executive all that he wants to get to the top. And then at the end, he kinda, it all comes clean and, and it's a happy ending. And I just think, why don't we do that? We can, hmm. we can throw on American accents, you know, and we were really into acting and playing parts, so we could play characters and then get in the door and as soon as we, if we got a record deal and if we got a record out then we can come out clean on like a TV show and say look we were never American and this is our story for us that would explain everything that would inspire young Scottish artists and artists all over the world to you know keep going if they were ever turned down so you started to work on the scheme it took you about two years to get it down how did yeah. you end up getting an audition with a major label in London the first um, weekend that we were in London, we blagged our way onto a show. We called up a promoter and said, look, you've got to give us this show. American accent, of course, now. And we just said, look, if we're on this bill, then it's going to be an amazing show. You need to have us on that bill. And we convinced the guy to put us on one of the headline slots. This was the kind of moment, you know, of deciding, this is it. We're going to stay in character. And as soon as we went on stage that night, the performance never stopped. Straight afterwards, there's a guy there from Ireland Records, and he comes up and he says, those words, where are you guys from? And we were just like, oh, Christ, there's no turning back now. So we went through our backstory. Yeah, we're from Hemet, California. Dad works in insurance. Mom, you know, <laughs> mom, na neighborhood watch and works with the church. Uh, you know, yeah, we got kicked out of school. We didn't tell the backstory. And then straight after that, it's like, okay, cool. We'll come to my office tomorrow morning, and we'll, we'll talk, and we'll go from there. So you, you ended up signing with Sony UK. Sony UK, yeah. Um, I and mean, you signed a, a deal with them as yeah. American rappers. As American rappers. A and deal you know, worth about, uh, about $350,000. Yeah. 
Uh, if you do the conversion, yeah. I mean, in, in the end, I mean, when you add the amount of uh, endorsements on top of everything, you know, tour support, record support, we, we, we eventually recorded three albums worth of, of music. I'm speaking with Scottish musician Gavin Bain. He's the author of California Scheming, the story of how for two years he pretended to be an American rapper. Gavin Bain, when did it all start to crumble? I mean, this, this lasted for two years. We never knew it was going to last that long. We just got carried away. There was so much money involved. The plan was originally to come out, but then as soon as we wanted to release the record, we realized that if the record came out and there was anything different that compromised the sales of the record, we stood to be sued. In other words, your contract said that if you guys misrepresented yourself, you would be yeah. held liable. Yeah, of course, yeah. Eventually, the, the lies we were caught up in just kept, you know, I don't know how much more we could have taken, but... It, it was more down to the personal relationships that Bill and I had, that we were best friends, and now we were, we were at each other's throats every night. The drinking and the drugs and everything had just gone so far, and uh, we blamed each other for it. And eventually, we couldn't come out of character. At first, we had to stop talking to our parents and our friends back home because we, it, it was hard to stay in character. But at this point, we were so in character, so in love with these characters, we couldn't get out of the character. It was complete insanity. You continued to sort of live on is Brains McLeod for about two more years, right? Yeah, in total it was five years that I was in character of Brains McLeod and for me, I still thought this American character I was playing was it was more beneficial to be him than me. That's how little I thought of myself and how, how much I thought of this Brains character. It was me playing my greatest hero and, and why would I want to end him, you know? But not realizing that he caused all this pro all these problems. It was him, you know, and actually the good stuff was actually just me. It was me playing it. When you hear what I I'm sure you won't be able to turn your Now in this very room, you can see it when you look out your window or when you turn on your television. You can feel it when you go to work, when you go to church, when you pay your taxes. It is the world that has been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth. What truth? Look out my side. 